hello subate you welcome to another beautiful video tutorial so in this video we'll be learning how to make a mermaid skirt with a tail so you can see how it is on my dummy you can see the tail flowing it's really not flowing that much on the dummy because the dummy is way taller than me if i put it on even the front is flowing on the floor do you understand so if this looks like what you want to know how to make how to cut the go get part and attach it to it if this looks like what you want to know how to make you can stick around let's get right into it so the first thing you need now after you just grab your patterned paper then you get your first thing you need is your hip height on your patterned paper so from your hip height now you go ahead to take your nail measurement you can take the measurement on your client's body or on your body depends on who you are making it for so i will impute my hip height i will impute my nail measurement and i will also go ahead and impute the full length of so the full length of the skirt now you can see from the video that is actually a gown right so um i will just impute the full length of the skirt so i'll go ahead and connect an horizontal line i will connect the nail line together and i will also connect the hip height line together so one thing i want us to know is that in this video i didn't use that for this particular gown because um i don't just want that on it so i went ahead to impute my normal waist measurement then i impute my 1.5 for seam allowance then on the hip line i impute my normal hip measurement then i went ahead to impute the 1.5 for seam allowance now for you to get your nail measurement you know the skirt is usually a bit tight on the nail do you get so now you minus two inches whatsoever your hip measurement gives you remove two inches from it to get your nail measurement now if you want it very tight please remove three inches from your hip measurement to get your nail measurement hope you understand that part so after that i'll go ahead and connect my lines together connecting from the waist to the hip line from the hip line to the nail line you can see that the nail line point is already looking tiny right so if you want it tinier than that you can remove three inches so from there now i will be connecting from the nail line to the hem of the skirt to the full length of the skirt now you have to determine how wide you want it to be so now for the full length now for how wide i want it to be at the bottom i'm using 17 inches i marked 17 inches from the center front of the skirt in inwards so from that 17 inches that i marked now i'll be connecting from that 17 inches that i marked straight to the new line do you understand so now i didn't want it to like to be very big to be very um to be very large at the bottom do you understand so like the picture we have on the thumbnail you can see that it's not very it's not a very big something it's not a very big skirt it just has a tail do you understand so that's why i didn't make it too big i didn't make it too large so i just extend with 17 inches and i connected with my straight ruler so the next thing i will just go ahead and cut it off after cutting i'll go ahead and place it on the material i'll first of all cut the front then we can go and cut the back so i've gone ahead to use this part to cut the front pattern but now we'll be going to cut the back pattern so now for the back i wanted us to see the cutting of the back don't forget the front is on fold now for the back we you have to remove your 1.5 for zipper allowance please don't forget this part you need your 1.5 for zipper allowance so you go ahead and measure your 1.5 from the edge of your material first before you will now come and place your before you now place your pattern from that 1.5 you place your pattern and you cut it off so the only difference between the front and back is the zipper allowance which is the 1.5 so i'll go ahead and cut it out and this is what the back pattern looks like so the next thing we'll be doing now is to get the part where we'll be facing the tail now we still need this back pattern to get that done that part will be facing the tail into so we are still working with the back 
pattern. So now the first step you need to do now go is to go ahead and get your new measurement. Just roll it. Just use your chalk mark and you roll a straight line. So I'm just getting my new measurement. If your new measurement is 20, you roll your 20 inches from your waist. So you can see how I'm connecting it. Now on that new measurement, that's where we'll be removing the parts where we'll be fixing the gorget into like the tail, where we'll be attaching the tail. We have to create a space where we'll be attaching the tail. Do you understand? So now you can see I'm placing my ruler slantly. Now you can decide to extend it more than I did here. I didn't use any measurement I just placed the ruler if you extend it more than that it's still going to come out nice so you can see how I placed the ruler like we are just creating a V shape out of it do you understand so I'll go ahead and cut this part out straight up to the nail level do you understand so now this V shape we are creating now this is where this go get this tail that will be cutting this is where we'll be fixing the tail into as we go on in the video you'll see how we'll be attaching all of this part together so after cutting that part away where our tail will fit into i will go ahead to um we will go ahead to cut the tail itself so now i'm using paper because i don't have much material do you understand so it kind of helped me to conserve my material so just get the um, bias form of your paper if you have a material just use your material so you just fold your material into bias form you can see I'm folding the paper into bias form so after folding it like this you see that pieces we cut out from that uh, front part bring it don't throw it away you see what we cut out from that place you place it on this bias uh, form that you've already folded you place it on it, you mark it. So it means that the other curve that you'll be baking now will be starting from that point because you see the both sides, the sides of the um, gorget, it has to be equal with the full length of the skirt. Do you understand? So that's why I brought it to mark. So after marking it, you go ahead and cut it out. So the, the lower part is too curvy. You can curve it a bit, like according to your choice. So this is it. I've gone ahead to place it on the material. So I will just go ahead and cut it off. So after cutting it off, the next thing now, we'll go ahead and join the back first. Like we'll join the zipper part of the back together. So you get it. So now we've gone ahead, we've cut the tail. The tail is already cut out. The front is cut out and the back is cut out. So this is the back pattern. Now this back pattern now, we have to remove our zipper allowance. Like where we'll be fixing the zip to where the length where the zip will get to so i'm using eight inches i'm marking eight inches so from that eight inches now i will sew it straight to that point that i've already cut away do you understand so this is it i've gone ahead to sew it i've joined the bar together now you can see the opening so now this is the gorget that we've cut do you get that we've just cut this is it so you can see how i'm placing it at the center after joining the zipper part together you go ahead and place it so after placing it like this now you turn it to the wrong side okay you can see how i'm turning it to the wrong side like this you place it like this you go ahead and make a straight stitch from the zipper level straight to the hem because it is equal you know we made the sides equal so this is it i've gone ahead to attach it to it you can see what I did. I've attached the gorget to the both side of the skirt. So the next thing we'll have to do now is to go ahead and join the front pattern to the back pattern. Do you understand? So we'll go ahead and join the front pattern to the back pattern. So after joining the front pattern to the back pattern, the next phase will be for us to go ahead and add the crinoline. So you can see... Um, there is a crinoline attached to the lower part of the skirt. So I will be showing us how I attach the crinoline to it also. This is the lower part and this is my crinoline. So I want to conceal the edge 
of the crinoline so you can see how i'm doing it i folded the, the fabric then i'm running it on the edge of the crinoline like you know how you used to use your bias to cover the edge of a fabric that's exactly what i'm doing so after sewing it i will also fold the bottom part of the fabric also then after running the first stitch i'm going to turn it to the other side can you see what i'm doing then I will run another stitch and press it. So by so doing now, the crinoline doesn't lose, like the edges are where are very well secured. So after that, we'll go ahead and place the crinoline on our material. But I will be adding my hemming gum to sew on the crinoline. Why? Because by the time I'm done attaching the crinoline straight on the lower part, when I iron it, I want it to be relaxed. Do you understand? So you can see how I'm adding the hemming gum to it. On top of the crinoline, there is hemming gum. So please, when you are fixing your crinoline, it should be on the right side of the fabric. This is the right side of the fabric I'm working on because the crinoline has to be on the wrong side of the fabric. So first of all, you place it on the right side of the fabric. You place your hemming gum on top of it. Then you just run a straight stitch. You just run it round it until you've exhausted the full lower part of the skirt or the gown that you are working with so you can see how i'm doing it please if you find this video helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up if there is any point you don't understand or anything you think i should have done better please i love i will really appreciate your feedback so you can see how i'm attaching it and don't forget to like share and subscribe don't forget to comment also so you can see how i'm attaching it so this is how you'll be attaching the green on the straight round the whole um lower part of the dress or the skirt that you are working on so after that now we have to close the edge so the, you can see that the both side i covered the both side with fabric so now we have to close it you you can see how i'm running it on top each other i'm just going to I'm just going to run the two parts on each other then after that the next thing i'll be doing now i will have to you can see i'm placing it on top yes i'll just run straight stitches just to press it down on each other do you understand so after doing that now we're going to be turning the uh crinoline to the wrong side um then we'll be doing top stitching to like just make sure that the edge the parts we've sewn on will be relaxed enough so please don't mind the fact that i'm using white crinoline i've had how many packs of this white crinoline with me for more than two years now so i just have to use it so you can see how i'm doing it so now we have to do top stitching so that it will relax by the time we turn it to the inside it will relax do you understand so we have to do top stitching you can see how i'm placing it then you see those joinings the part we use to join the fabric and the lining together push it to the lining part and press it down so you are pressing it round again do you understand you are doing the top stitch round again can you see how i'm doing it you can see that the the joining part is is on the lining side right because i want everything to be relaxed by the time we want to turn, turn the crinoline to the other side so this is how i'm just going to continue pressing it all round so can you see what i'm doing so can you see what i'm showing us so this is how we'll be pressing it all around so this is it i've gone ahead to run it round and this is what we have so the next thing now we have to turn it to the inside we turn the crinoline to the inside then we'll run a straight stitch so you can see what i'm doing so now we'll be running straight we'll be running it round again and please when you're turning your crinoline inside make sure you are arranging the fabric do you understand arrange the crinoline and the fabric very well so that you don't have excess fabric at any point no point of it will be packing so you see what i'm doing so when you then iron it so this is it 
this is the ironing table so i'll just go ahead and uh, you can see how smooth it is now the 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 hemming gum we put now this is where it will come into use that as you iron it relaxes it very well everything will just relax do you get so that's the use of the hemming gum that you are using by the time you are attaching the krill only to the main fabric and when you're done ironing your skirt is ready i hope this video was helpful i hope you find this video helpful if you find it helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up don't forget to like don't forget to comment if there is any point you think i should have thrown more light on please you can also share your view you can i love your feedback please just Tell me what you think about the video and I will really appreciate. Thank you very much for sticking behind. This is the end of the video. So you just go ahead and iron everything round. And this is the final outcome after I finish ironing everything. Hope this video was helpful and hope it was um, well explained enough for you to understand. See you in my next video.